one of, if not the biggest and rarest Pokemon card collections ever was just purchased by Rare Candy. Today, I'm showing you it all. A mysterious Japanese collector sold us this dream come true collection that includes thousands of items, complete sets, and even some cards never before seen in the wild. We're just beginning to go through things and there is so much Pokemon card history sitting right here, but there's seriously so much to do. Right, John? A lot of cards to sort through here, Lee. Yes, there's so many cards to get sorted and we gotta get the rarest cards graded as well. And then- Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, not quite that far back. Okay, that's better. In case you haven't noticed for almost three decades, Pokemon, already the highest grossing media franchise of all time, is quite literally big in Japan. Pikachu? Children and adults alike in Japan connect with Pokemon in a way that American audiences may never. Pikachu! In Japan, they have a whopping 16 Pokemon centers, an annual Pikachu parade, Pokemon cafes, hotels, themed attractions. You can even get Pokemon stuff from a vending machine in Japan. The cards in this collection are cool, but there's a wealth of other rare Pokemon memorabilia in here. Posters, deck boxes, binders, tins, lunch boxes, manga, magazines, it just goes on and on. I wish I can show you all of the cool stuff in here, but that may be for another time. There are some boxes, sealed boxes we've never seen on the market. There's trophy cards that we all kind of dream about and hope to one day own one or, or see one. I first heard tale of this legendary collection on social media. The collector posted some very grainy and low quality pictures and videos of his cards. Okay, now you gotta understand. It's hard to believe that these images were actually real, but if they were, I just knew we had to investigate. Not knowing the full story of this guy, you know, he's kind of a mystery. Assuming these cards have been in his binder for 20 plus years, which is incredible to think about. No one knew of this mysterious collector. Clearly a private person and also a serious completionist when it came to collecting. Like, for example, this set of three Challenge Road promo cards from 1999. The story behind these cards is pretty cool. In the summer of 1999, what is now considered the very first Pokemon TCG World Championships took place in Honolulu, Hawaii. But this was nothing like last year's massive event in London. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Only a small handful of kids from America and Japan competed at what was known as the Tropical Mega Battle. The website Pokemon.com has a lot of cool photos from the event and oh my, look at this shirt. Hold please. It's uh, probably none of my size anyway. To qualify for the event, Japanese players had to win an event held in Japan, an event that was held in a secret location and was known as the Secret Super Battle. Pretty cool name, right? They were only given to the top finishers in each age bracket, meaning there's only nine copies of each of these cards in the world. Hey look, it's the Tropical Mega Battle cards. You know what? I'll be pinned. Yoink. Anyway, we've seen these cards in the wild before, but it's incredibly rare for someone to have the complete set of all three. Just one example of how dedicated our mystery collector was to building his collection. They were also illustrated by legendary artist Ken Sugimori, the original designer of Pokemon who has now illustrated almost a thousand cards, more than anyone else. But there's more from the tropical mega battle in this find. The collector also had the Challenge Road promos called Tropical Wind in Lucky Stadium with this absolutely gorgeous art of Saida chilling in a hammock and then the Starmie relaxing on the beach. Just look at these masterpieces. Here's two more really cool cards that the collector had. These phone cards were given out as prizes at various tournaments at the time. Now for my younger viewers, if you don't know what phone cards are, in America, we typically call them calling cards, and it was sort of like a prepaid card so you can make calls at payphones. And if you don't know what a payphone is, well, I can't help you with that. Oh yeah, I was telling you how we closed the deal. Back to that. So back to 2021, springtime-ish. 
I started DMing back and forth with the collector. He was clearly a very quiet person and very straight to the point. Wow. With this unique personality, I was really nervous I'd say the wrong thing and lose this chance. I started to get a sense of what we were dealing with here, and I could tell this was truly a monumental find for card collectors worldwide. But what really slowed down things was the communication barrier. The collector only spoke Japanese, so this deal took a long, long time to get done. I mean, John, can you believe how long it took? Are you gonna help with this? Okay, so like I was saying, eventually we had to send someone to Japan. Oh, the snap cards. I gotta tell you about these. Oh. Pokemon Snap Released in Japan in the spring of 1999, the magazine Koro Koro held a contest in May asking readers to submit their best photo from the game for a chance to have that photo made into a card. The Pokemon Snap cards are among the most rarest and elusive cards ever released by the Pokemon company. Pokemon thought this was so cool and the trading card game had taken off, they decided to take 10 of the best photos they could find and turn them into action shots. To do so, players have to bring their own cartridge to selected convenience stores in Japan. The digital artwork will be printed out on a sticker, sticker put on postcard, and the postcard sent out. And of those 10 winners, they only made 20 copies of each card. That's why they are highly sought after. No one on Earth has a complete collection of all 10 snap cards. In fact, the only known Magikarp card in the world recently surfaced. The seller we purchased from had these six, a colossal achievement. Uh, where was I? We sent a guy to Japan. Oh yeah, so we sent a guy to Japan. Yes, it really took over a year to get this all worked out, but finally, we were close to reaching a deal. So we sent out someone from Rare Candy to meet with the mysterious collector in Japan and check out this holy grail find. The collection we got also includes these two astonishingly rare and historical cards. This Kangaskhan promo was given to the teams of parents and children who competed at a Mega Battle Tournament in 1998. It's one of the few promo cards in existence where the set symbol is the original Pocket Monsters logo. The other card, known to collectors as the University Magikarp, was given to fans who completed the Celadon University program through Shogakukan magazines in 1998. People would mail in their answers to increasingly harder quizzes about Pokemon, and keep in mind, it's not like you can just look up these answers on the internet. Those who made it all the way to the end were awarded the title of Hyper Pokemon Professor. The card is super unique because it features Sugimori art of Magikarp performing Dragon Rage, a Gyarados move. <laughs> There was only a thousand of these given out, and today we know the whereabouts of about 100. So in the end, we made the deal. The cards came to America, and once we got them off our truck, it was incredible to see the massive sprawl of this gigantic stockpile spread out over the Rare Candy HQ. Right now, we're sorting through the very best cards so we can get them graded. We've seen the amazing cards, but protecting them is of the utmost importance. That's why for the very best cards in this collection, I've decided to go with PSA for grading, but what exactly is grading? Grading is the process by which a trading card goes to a third-party authenticator for inspection. PSA is one of the largest and most respected trading card grading companies in the world. When I send one of my pulls off to PSA for grading, they do all of this. They use a rigorous 10-point grading system to assess the quality and condition of the card. PSA's quality check is based on staining, printing, imperfections, and centering. They also encapsulate the card in a super cool case, commonly known as a slab. PSA's slabs are sonically sealed and tamper evident, plus the label at the top shows the grade and the card's certification number. With that number, you can track your collection and compare it with other graded cards around the world. This permanent digital record shows us how many of these hyper-rare cards are out there in the wild, and with it, you can see just how truly scarce some of these are. I'm looking forward to seeing what the grades are from PSA, so be sure to subscribe because we'll be doing a reveal video of all the grades. Phew, I'm beat. John, you want to grab some lunch?